hours now, right until the election, about the minutiae of elections. I take the gas pipe over there. I can't do it. That's not me. You want someone else to do it? God bless them. Go find it. I am not going to do it. See, I'm holding my fire. I really want to talk about the Zika virus, but you're not interested. You'd rather get it and have a, a disease than talk about it. No one wants to talk about anything. Again, the same thing. Trump, Cruz, Hillary, Bernie. Trump, Cruz, Hillary, Bernie. Trump, Cruz, Hillary, Bernie. Bernie, Hillary, Trump, do. Okay, so we won't talk about the Zika virus. We will not talk about anything. We're not allowed to talk about anything except uh, the election. And the election in a small state with a small number of people that is skewed in one demographic ethnically and one demographic uh, religiously. Here, U.S. airstrikes have destroyed the ISIS voice of the caliphate radio station in Afghanistan. Now, why do you think the U.S. suddenly launched these airstrikes? Because Obama was forced to do so because of, of Putin. Everybody knows that. Putin is our natural ally against radical Islam. Why? What's his name? Cruz is against... Uh, uh, what's his name? Why he hates Putin is clear to me because he's being misadvised by the neocons who got us into Iraq twice and into Afghanistan. They're the same people who are stupid. These are lifetime policy wonks who live behind closed doors and pull the strings of candidates with dumb advice. And they're the ones telling them to hate Putin and make that a campaign uh, speech. Here's another story. San Francisco Way is giving condoms to middle schoolers. I saw that yesterday. I almost fell out of my chair. I said, why? I sent it to my wife. I said, what? Condoms to middle schoolers in San Francisco? Without the parents' permission, by the way. That's how, that's how progressive they are in this city. A board committee is scheduled to discuss the proposal Monday. San Francisco public school leaders, a bunch of degenerates, are considering distributing condoms at middle schools. That means the sixth grade. That means in the sixth grade, the kids are already having sex, and they're going to give them condoms instead of telling them to abstain. That's the city I live in. I'll be back in a minute. Vaya Cruz, vaya Rubio, aquí, the two Cubans. Vaya, 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 vaya. That song is the music. It's going to be the new theme song of America. That would be one benefit if one of them won anyway, if they changed the uh, theme song of some of these campaigns. Play the music 10 more seconds. Just give me 10 more seconds. My brain is shutting down. I feel like I used to feel in high school when I was zoning out when the teacher would bore me to the point where I was biting the hair off my forearms to stay awake, and I would fall asleep. I was so bored. That's what I feel like about these... These, these primaries and uh, caucuses, they don't mean anything to me. And yet, uh, obsession, obsession, day and night. A caucus and this one and that one, this means that this, and he moved ahead, and I mean, Rubio came up and he fell down, and Trump is second, and although Hillary won, she didn't really win, because it means that the communist from Brooklyn, although he eats pickles and sauerkraut, and he grew up on carbon dioxide and seltzer, and he's a total anti-American lout, look how good he did amongst the evangelicals, it shows that they're not racist, they pick a lunatic like him, this is what they want to talk about, day and night. And the big story here is that an article just came out. U.S. intelligence officials, as I said to you the other day, say the top secret emails Hillary Clinton kept in her private server named spies serving undercover overseas. A violation of federal law. The agents can now be killed if they haven't already been killed. And she's giving away a victory speech. That's all. Lives have been put at risk if they're not dead already. The spies are going to be killed because of Hillary's, you know, loose lips and all that. Sink ships. And after she won already. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language. Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. <laughs> Cuban music. 
music. Get used to it. My fear is that the Cuban experience has uh, overly influenced uh, Cruz, especially with regard to his distaste for Vladimir Putin of Russia. It's stupid. It makes no sense. He's living in the dark ages. He's listening to the neocons who got us into the Iraq wars. And he doesn't understand that the world has changed since Ronald Reagan was buried and that we're really not at war with Russia, nor do we have to be. They're our natural ally. It's insanity. That's his greatest weakness, by the way. And by the way, it's one of Trump's greatest strengths. Trump likes Putin. Trump recognizes that Russia is our natural ally against radical Islam. But apparently Cruz is listening to the neocons and thinks that Russia is the great enemy. Someone has analyzed why Trump lost to Iowa, and it says because he crushed Ben Carson. He hit Ben hard. He questioned his integrity, questioned him as a doctor. And what happened is after he eviscerated Carson, Carson's polls, poll numbers collapsed, Carson's campaign staff quit, his fundraising came to zero, and then the Carson voters did not go over to Trump. They switched to Cruz. And the analysis says that poll numbers show Cruz's dramatic rise right after the Carson collapse. And Newsmax goes on to say Trump effectively defeated Carson to elect Cruz. Had Carson remained higher in the polls, he would have become Cruz's target, and the pair would have divided the evangelical vote, paving the way for an easy Trump win. The lesson of Iowa is this, Reagan's 11th commandment. Reagan's directive said, thou shalt not speak ill of a fellow Republican. They can disagree on policy matters, but personal attacks should be avoided at all costs. Never a personal attack on the other. And Donald Trump, because of his personal attacks on Ben Carson, this, argue, this, this analysis has cost him the, the, uh, the, the vote in, 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 uh, in Iowa. So it remains to be seen what happens next and whether his strategy will change and well, oh, whether... Uh, um, I can't even remember their names anymore. I'm so bored of this. I'm not going to do it. I have to stop. Well, let's take a few more calls, and I'm shifting to the Zika virus. I can't take another minute of this. This is so not interesting to me. This is like analyzing. This is for a, a policy wonk who eats uh, bad meals and gets excited at these conventions, goes to these things. You know the people who go to these conventions, what they're like, the party apparatchiks of the type that go to these events? They're different than you and I. And I don't know that this is all there is to talk about in the universe right now. Is there nothing else that interests us, interests you? Okay, let's go to the call. Is Rick on WABC? Go ahead. What's on your mind, Rick? Uh, what's on my mind? The reason Cruz or Rubio hates Russia is they're Cuban. They've been brought up with that since age two by their parents and grandparents. If Russia were to cure the Zika virus, cancer, and destroy all their nuclear weapons tomorrow... Cruz and Rubio would still hate Russia. That, that, that is brilliant. How did you figure, Rick, how did you come to this conclusion? It's genius. <laughs> you know, uh, well, I'm part Cuban. I called you about Castro about three months ago. Uh, you, don't have a, you don't have a Cuban-American accent. You have like a real deli accent from New York. I speak a little Spanish. My father was born in Cuba. He went to law school with that. No, but I like the way you say my father, my father, father. You have a real New York accent. From Brooklyn, what can I tell you? I live Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. No, but you're brilliant. What insight? See, you're like me. People think that because you sound like that, that you're not smart. You don't sound like you went to Wharton, or that you went to you know Harvard. But you actually know how to think. That's that probably does explain their enmity towards Putin and Russia. It's stupid. It doesn't apply to now. Yeah, but he will say it's the same as uh, Mr. Cruz has. You know, uh, that's the way the Cubans. Uh, you know. It's funny because Cubans have had this, you know, for a hundred years. But like in the Middle East, they've been fighting for thousands of years. And the Cubans are more hateful in certain respects when it comes to Russia than the uh, Arabs and the Jews. That's All right, so that explains why Cruz has the stupidity to hate Russia and make that a campaign issue. Very simple. They, you know, uh... No, I don't know. I've, no one ever said that. I thought it was probably because he was being misadvised by the neocons in these little uh, think tanks in Washington, in the Beltway, who uh, you know, still advising him like Ronald Reagan's still alive. Yes. Uh, that, that, yeah, it's probably a little bit of that. The old-timers 
who have uh, half half timers. The old timers with half timers are still advising him that that Russia is our great enemy, not radical Islam. Right, and it could even be his grandmother, his cousins, his uncles. You know, you know somebody ought to say to him, "Russia is our natural ally, Ted, not our enemy." What's wrong with you? I I don't know. He most Americans, by the way, respect Putin. And this is going to cost Cruz a tremendous amount of uh, support if he keeps this up. It's one of the reasons Donald makes more sense. He knows reality. I don't think these other guys know reality as well as he does. That's why I backed uh, Trump. I think Trump is ultimately a realist. The others aren't. They're sort of academics. Not sort of. They are academics. They're academic polit politicians is what they are. All right, look, we can do this from today until tomorrow. Our opinions don't really matter to the candidates because they don't listen to us. Do you really think they listen to us? Go on. Go on with, oh, he's still there. That's, do you think they actually listen to us, uh, Rick? No, not, none of them. I think Trump is listening to us, but that's, uh, that's about it. All right, so I'm going to give you a test. Uh, how would you define yourself politically? What would you say you are politically? Uh, I, I'm a, a registered independent. Most of the time I vote Republican, but I voted for Democrats, too. So, in, in the middle. Well, wh which Democrats could possibly appeal to you? Uh, oh, the ones today. Not, not Nobody. But on local levels and sometimes... Oh, 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 oh. So you're talking about another era when there were, when there were conservative Democrats. Yes, there's none of them anymore. They, they've all been thrown out and taken to the woodshed, basically. Look what they did to the one Democrat candidate who had a, a, true, a true love for America, the former Navy Secretary Jim Webb. Look what they did to him. Yes, they basically threw him out, basically. You know, yeah, uh, and, you, and, 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 all right, you're from New York. Who's Bernie Sanders to you? When you, say Ber when you look at Bernie Sanders, who do you see? I see the guy that I used to buy pastrami sandwiches for him in Brooklyn is what I see. All right. Now, a nice guy who was filled with anti-American uh, attitudes because of something that happened to his grandmother. Yes, exactly. You know? and, he and he espoused Bolshevik philosophy with the corned beef. Yes. And, and, and in New York, that place. Well, I don't have to tell you, but in New York, that place. What, in that deli I mentioned? Yes. <laughs> there's not, by the way i went to that deli the last time i was in new york there's not one person of that original ethnic group left in that deli they're all from puerto rico they're uh, actually yes they're all hispanic yes that's and they're nice guys but even the old jewish guys all died from their own food yeah well if you eat enough of that food i guess you die oh, are you kidding that food knocked out in a whole generation no one lived past 52 anyone who ate that food regularly died at 50 51 if they hit that far that's after two heart attacks. Oh, but it's delicious. Oh, my God, the French fries the size of an infant's arm. All right, my friend, thanks for playing ball with me on the Savage Nation. Let's see, what do we have left here? All right, WJR, Jim, go ahead. What's on your mind, Jim? Hey, Savage, it's an honor. I just wanted to say I can't, I, as far as Putin is concerned, I wish we had a leader that promoted having a backbone. All right, so why do you think Ted Cruz makes hating Putin part of his campaign? I almost feel like it's like almost trying to just get America back to the Cold War, the Cold War mentality. Now, do you think we need that? Do you think that's what we need? I don't. Hell no. Sorry, sorry to no. use a colorful metaphor. but No, that's okay. I don't think so. Let's go to the next caller on the Savage Nation. WJR, Bob, what's on your mind? Hello, I'm calling about the Bible passage you quoted. Yes. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Yes. Uh, okay, they were always trying to trap Jesus, like they're asking him, uh, okay, well, should we pay our taxes to the Romans? They hated the Romans. And they're expecting him to say, no, no, don't do that. But he, what he says is, okay, pull the money out. Whose picture's on it? It's Caesar's picture. He says, okay, give it to Caesar. He says... So basically what he's saying is give Caesar all your money back so that you don't... Well, what he said, what he, yeah, they were trying, they had malice towards Jesus, and they said to him, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And Jesus was smart.